United Nations Population Fund has, since the start of the Duterte's administration, launched the Babainihan campaign, protecting teenage girls' rights to education and reproductive health to achieving development. For more on this, with us now from Makati is Klaus Beck, the United Nations Population Fund country representative. Good to have you with us, Klaus. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Kathy. So how's the program coming along so far? You launched Baba Inihan in July 2016. That was just months before the death they signed into law the uh, uh, strengthening of the access to modern family planning. That's true. Um, we launched it last year, uh, and this campaign is really taking on full steam this year. Uh, it's basically aimed at trying to do something and raise awareness about teenage pregnancy, what we do to address that in terms of investing in health, education, and employment to really overcome the challenge that we're seeing with a large increase in teenage pregnancy in the Philippines. When um, you say full steam, what does that mean? What are the metrics? Because in the Asia Pacific, all the metrics are coming down when it comes to teenage pregnancies, but it's not happening in the Philippines, at least not yet. That is true. I guess uh, the first step really in, in addressing the issue is really to create a, a, an increased awareness. And I think we've really been able to do that over the last year or so. We now see a lot of momentum. We have uh, the Philippine government fully on board with this. The new Philippine Development Plan has a very clear ch chapter that has I areas related to, the, to uh, addressing teenage pregnancy. We see legislative action in Congress, both houses of Congress. There are, there are bills now pending on what to do to really uh, move forward on teenage pregnancy. And at the community level, we are having a number of talks together with the vice president and her office uh, to really talk to young girls and young boys about what's going on out there, why is it happening, what can we do about it, to really gather momentum uh, and mobilize communities to address the issue. That's why the campaign is called Baba Nihan, you know, the spirit of Baba Nihan. Uh, and working together to help address issues and challenges of young girls. Now, so let's just take a Nihan. step back, Claus. I mean, all this is about helping protect teenage girls, exercise their rights to education, as well as reproductive health. Why is this important, and in the context of achieving development? Well, it's critically important. I mean, first of all, young girls who get pregnant early, they are more likely not to finish high school, which means that they are less likely to have a good income in life. We know that uh, among those who get pregnant, only 65% are able to complete high school, but those who do not become pregnant, 72% complete high school. So that's one, one thing. We also know that they have less uh, income potential over their lifetime. For instance, uh, those who become pregnant early, we know that generation of those, the foregone earnings they have over their lifetime is 33 billion pesos. So it's like 1.1 percent of the GDP that is lost because of these early teenage pregnancies. So it has an impact on the lives of the girls themselves, but it also has a big impact on the overall economy of the country. Okay, let's talk about policy implementation. Am I, is that getting in the way? Because I, I understand that still some of the provisions of the uh, Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health or the RPRH law are still under the Supreme Court's temporary restraining order. In what way has that impeded your delivery of, of these unmet needs at the UNFPA? Well, the, the bigger picture, that's goes, that, that those challenges goes beyond the issues of young girls. Those are issues related to access to various types of contraceptives, most specifically the, the implants, which is something that is, your women can use that gives them three years of protection against pregnancy. That is the one that has been challenged in the Supreme Court and has been under a TRO uh, by the Supreme Court. Um, so that has meant that the choices that women have in terms of what contraceptive methods to use has been more restricted than it had to be. And when that is the case, we know less women will be using contraceptives. So in that way, it's true, it has had a bit of a challenge for, uh, to, to the implementation of the law. Uh, the legal challenges have, have, have had an impact. I know that you called on the Duterte administration July of last year to prioritize policies and programs to, to harness the potential of the young. So how has the government gone on in, in helping teenage girls make responsible choices one year on? Well, I mean, I think the, the, the maybe go back to why, why is it that young girls get pregnant? It's because they don't know how, to, how they get pregnant. And they don't, even if they would know how they get pregnant, they wouldn't have access to how to protect themselves from pregnancy. So that basically means that they don't have the information and they don't have access to services. So those are the two things we need to work at. And, and currently, the, the challenge is that uh, the, the legal setup is such that young girls and young boys who want to access modern family planning are not allowed to do so without parental consent. That means if you're less than 18, you can only do so if you ask your mom and dad for, 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 for agreement. 
and uh, that is a challenge. We know that in many countries, not just in the Philippines, young, young people would not ask their parents whether they can use modern family planning. So that is a challenge that, that will continue to be there even once the TROs are lifted because that is a challenge of young people having access to exercise their reproductive rights and to make the good choices in life related to their health. So you want that repealed? Well, I'm saying that, that, that the way the current legislation is, is, in, is there, we know that it has an impact. Uh, and, and I think we believe that based on also international uh, agreements related to human rights, that it's, it's young people also have a, have a right to make decisions over their own bodies and they also have a right to make decisions on their own health. Sometimes and most likely we would want them to make those decisions in, with their parents, but we all know that it's not always possible. Sometimes parents are not, not uh, very much present in young people's lives. Some may not be physically present also. Uh, so it's not easy for every young person to have that opportunity to have a strong family relationship where they're able to talk to your parents about these very difficult and very personal issues. Yeah, the bills that you mentioned pending in Congress, supportive of uh, family planning, uh, is, is any of them uh, going to support the challenge that you just mentioned right now? Well, um, we'll have to see because the, the, the current draft in, that is pending, uh, different drafts in the House and in the, in the Senate, uh, so we'll have to see how, the, how the, all the consultations pan out. But we are, I think we are hoping that if you really want to address teenage pregnancy, which also means basically saving young people's lives, because some of these young girls unfortunately die giving birth, then it's, it's really a life-saving measure we are looking at. So it's not just a question of choice and rights, but it's also a life-saving measure. And this is the escape vial that I think UNFPA believes really needs to be there, that young people, if they don't have the support of their family and the network they need, then they really need to have an opportunity to make those choices for themselves so they don't get into uh, jeopardy, life-saving, uh, sorry, life-threatening uh, circumstances that they find themselves in. All right, broader picture and linking this to uh, inclusive growth. How much of a window do you think does the Philippines still have left uh, before it misses the, uh, the fleeting opportunity for economic development or the so-called demographic dividend? Well, the, the gap is closing and it's closing fast. If, if we don't see a full implementation of the RPRH law, if we don't see a full implementation of the K-12 program in terms of young people having finishing 12 years of education, and if we don't see a much, much better link between those who finish education and getting into productive employment that is also well paid, then I'm afraid there wouldn't even be any demographic dividend to be had for the Philippines. So you really need to address those three things, making sure that education is there, that access to reproductive health services, particular family planning, and also access to productive and, and well-paid employment. Uh, and that's also what we hear from businesses, that many businesses are saying to us, we, we, the young people that are coming out of school are not really ready to be, we cannot really employ them. Uh, and that's just going to be worse, particularly if young people also become more and more pregnant. Uh, that means that more and more of them will fall out of the labor market or may never really enter the labor market. And I don't think the Philippines can afford that. All right. Well, thank you for keeping us up to speed and for the assessment there. Klaus Beck, the country manager of the United Nations Population much. Fund in Makati.